Minnesota Vikings at the Baltimore Ravens. Brad has a bet in on this one. Steven has a bet in on this one. And they are oppo this week on this game. So I'm loving this. We have a six, six and a half point spread right now in favor of the Baltimore Ravens. A total of 50. Steven, I'll start with you. You like the Ravens coming out of a bye here. Yeah, I think it's a great spot for them. I think this is a huge coaching mismatch with Harbaugh's staff against Mike Zimmers. So I, I love that they're getting extra rest and extra prep time. And I think it's a brutal spot for Minnesota coming off that game where they lost at home in prime time. On top of that, they had what I believe is a significant major injury to their defense in their front seven. Daniil Hunter is on IR now. To me, their most important pass rusher. And this team, 22nd in pass rush win rate, 32nd in run stop win rate on the season, and now they lose to Neil Hunter. Juxtapose that with Baltimore's offense. You're looking at an offensive line that's top 10 in both Uh, blocking win rates, whether it's run or pass, and just an explosive offense, right? This is a top five offense in PFF grade, top five in run block win rate, yards per play, early down success, early down EPA, explosive plays. I love that combination. So when you have that type of offense, laying five and a half isn't a big deal to me, even though it's it's more than the typical three or three and a half. I like to bet for a favorite. But, um, you know, the, the Ravens offense is explosive. And when the Vikings have the ball, hey, this is a debate, Brad. So I'm going to use your own words against you. All right. When Kirk Cousins gets pressured, he folds like a house of cards. And this Vikings offense 29th in pressure allowed against the Ravens defense that is seventh in pressure rate so I have no problem laying the points here on the injury front uh some decent news D- don't know if it's going to manifest for this game or not but uh Derek Wolf defensive lineman been out since August for the Ravens uh did get active uh designated to return from injured reserve so his window is now open they could activate him as well, any point over the next 21 days to bring in even some more reinforcements on the defensive side of the ball for the Ravens. Sammy Watkins still not practicing for them, but frankly, at this point, Sammy Watkins, just an afterthought for this offense. He wasn't doing anything anyway, so I don't I, I don't really know why we continue, especially now that Rashad Bateman is back, why we continue to give updates on what's going on with Sammy Watkins. But we will continue to do that until uh, we need to. Brad, you are on the other side here. You have taken six points with the Minnesota Vikings with Mike Zimmer as their coach. What say you? Defend yourself here, Brad. (laughs) Well, I I think we know a little. Very talented team, which is badly coached. But the bad coaching comes in the most when they're favorite. And they're playing a bad team. Zimmer seems to think it needs to come down to the last five minutes of the game and it's run, run, pass. And it's but when if they're forced to play catch up, um, then they they're forced to take the shackles off. They're forced to throw downfield to Jefferson. They're forced to throw on early downs. Um, and I, it's a different team. Like Cousins is he, he's one of the top graded quarterbacks in the entire league this year. But they they just don't really give him that much opportunity. Um, like obviously he was bad last week against the Cowboys he, he missed Jefferson downfield several times but we, we do know what he is we know long term he, he's probably like a 10th you know 10th 9th best quarterback in the NFL maybe 12th you know ar- around that range he's good enough um, to to hit, to hit Jefferson and Thielen basically um, so I just think that they're probably a little bit um, underrated at the minute just because of that Cowboys game right everyone's just watched them piss away a game to a, to a backup quarterback which they, they should have won um, now, I am worried about the um, the defense here. Like they've got very good stats. The defense, well, they're fourth in defensive DVOA, um, despite kind of those bad pass rush metrics that uh, Stephen mentioned. And obviously, they, they are losing the best pass rusher here. They're going to be without Patrick Peterson as well, likely on on the outside. So, to me, it, it came down to the plus six or the over fifty, mm-hmm. um, and I, I just ended up with the the plus six because. I th- uh, yeah, I, th- I think the Vikings also, they're, they're quite a similar team to the Bengals. They, they've got a smart quarterback and good weapons. Um, so, yeah, I, I think I think they're, they'll be, they're, w- they're well set up to take advantage of this this Ravens defense. Um, and I'm hopeful they'll be forced into throwing it. And they'll if they put up 27 points or so, you've, you've got to fancy them to cover plus six. 
Yeah, I uh, at five and a half, I kind of like, look, Stephen, I like your number. And, you know, there's a six and a half even popping right now on the Viking side of things. And I don't think that that's a bad bet either. Not really waffling here. But I guess uh, if you made me choose a side right now, I would probably I'd probably lay the six with the Ravens at home uh, coming out of a bye here. Mike Zimmer has really at this point just lost all confidence with me. Yeah, uh, I, I can't I, I can't back this guy with the way that he is his 1950s mentality of how you go about playing football and and you know it, it just for me is very very tough to back a team like this and again one thing I do look is is there going to be pressure on Kirk Cousins and if so how do I feel like he's going to be able to you know we know they blitz the Ravens blitz at the fourth high, highest, highest rate in the NFL they get the seventh highest pressure rate on the quarterback in the NFL they're winning uh, the pass rush 10th uh, overall in the NFL as well and this uh, Minnesota offensive line, 29th in the league in pressure allowed so far this season. So for me, uh, Kirk under pressure here against Harbaugh coming out of a bye. I think they figured out a way probably over that bye as well to get Rashad Bateman a little bit more involved in this offense and, and really work him in as well. So I do like the Ravens side of this thing. So, Brad, you lose, basically. Essentially, <laughs> I do we're have, since we're, since we're grading this. I do have a long shot futures here that I added to my account this week as well. With Derrick Henry being out for the season, I dabbled a little on Dalvin Cook, 33-1, to to finish the season with the most rushing yards. I think this race is wide open at this point. This is a player that had 1,550 rushing yards in just 14 games a year ago. And here's the key. He's 200 behind the new leader, Jonathan Taylor, but Taylor hasn't had his bye yet. 140 behind Nick Chubb also has not had his bye yet. So we know Dalvin Cook will get fed for the rest of the season. And I think that's a margin that he can close in on as we get going here, as long as he stays healthy at 33 to one. I thought it was worth a few bucks.